everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock to Your Studio. Today I'm sharing with you the first page that I have made for the Crazy Pages project, which is a collaboration with a bunch of different people. We all made a background page, sent it to everyone, and then we received pages back in the mail. And um, then we're going to use those in some ways. I think most people are probably going to sew them into a book. But I just have have taken all my pages, put them in an envelope, and I'm just going to use them to make pages in other books that I'm trying to complete. And this book that I'm using is my very first journal I ever made. And it was made out of a cereal box and um, a bunch of different types of papers on the inside for the signatures. I would like to complete this, so I'm going to try to I'm going to try to do that. <laughs> I'm going to try to complete it. So. Um, one thing that I didn't like about the construction of this particular journal is I made the signatures too far apart when I was sewing them in. And so on some of these pages I have a gap and I really don't like that. And a lot of the pages that are left in this book that haven't been used yet have gaps. So I'm working on trying to figure out how to, um, you know, make that less obvious. So the first thing that I did is I, I, um, just sewed these pages because I wasn't really sure what I was going to do. And the paper, um, actually the paper on both sides of this is a lighter weight watercolor paper. It's very textured. It's an 80 pound cheap watercolor paper that I had back way back then. I mean, I made this journal probably now three years ago and it's just never been completed. It doesn't have all the pages done in it. So I just like to get that done so that it'll be on the, the shelf as a completed art journal. So this particular piece, I believe, was from Marianne, and it's the one that she says, oh, danger, danger, it's, it's, uh, not, it's not permanent, it's water-soluble. So it's on a heavyweight weight, uh, watercolor paper, and um, so I decided to glue it down to the page using tacky glue. Uh, I could have used gel medium, but I was worried that I would get medium onto the non, you know, the water soluble parts of the of this page and make a big smeary mess. So I decided to just glue it down with tacky glue. So I folded it and glued it down in the center to cover up that gap that I'm talking about to make the this two page spread cohesive. And I tore it on a couple sides and uh, kept other sides sides straight. And then the second piece is the crazy page from Linda Israel, and I'm using it as well. It coordinates with the colors, and it has some different patterns on it. So I'm just using these pieces and um, kind of tearing them, making them into strips, doing different things to make kind of a collage page. And this other little piece is torn off the edge of the other one, the Marianne's. So I'm... I'm putting that on. I'm just trying to think about uh, balance and you know that the layout. I've got the the uh, rule of threes, the two thirds, one third thing type going there. Um, that's another little piece. I thought it was it kind of mimicked the tear at the top, so I thought it would be interesting to add it back in. But then I end up covering up the tear at the top. But anyway, it was a it was a good idea at the time. And then there's another little piece that I've cut off. It was a very small strip to kind of connect those two areas on the left and the right, just to make it look a little bit more connected. Don't really want to put too much more in the middle. It's already you know got this this heavy watercolor paper on it. But I'm not. I'm not thinking too hard about this. I'm just making decisions based on things that I already know, things that how, how I feel that things should look. So then after I got those those bits glued on from Marianne and, and Linda, then I wanted to put something else on there. This was a drawing from Marianne's envelope and it didn't it was too big. It was gonna cover up too much of this um, this side on the left that has some interesting patterns from Linda. So I didn't want to put that on. So then 
looking for other stuff. Oh, sorry. <laughs> now everybody's yawning. Trying to find something to cover up the top part of the page, the top one third of the page. Trying to figure out what I want to put on there as a focal point. I end up using this uh, envelope from Linda. That was the envelope that her page was in. And it had some of the same type of stenciling in the same colors on the outside of the envelope. She just, you know, threw a stencil on there, sprayed it to make it look more interesting. And um, I decided that that would look nice at the top of my page to cover up that white section. And this is where I end up covering up my little torn bump that I had. Kind of wish I hadn't done that. <laughs> I wished I could have uh, tucked it, tucked this piece back behind there and let that little torn bump show because I liked it. Then this little stamped image is from the envelope that Nikki, Nikki Parr's uh, page is in. I used a couple of, I when I when I took apart all the envelopes, I tore off any pretty stamps, any um, decoration that was on the outside. If it was an interesting envelope, I saved it. And so those are gonna be, it, become part of the whole process. Um, any of those saved pieces will end up making it onto the pages because I I feel like it's all a part of it. It's all like this big mail art collaboration swap thing. It's all one big thing. And so I want to use all the pieces, even the, the parts that were on the outsides of the envelopes. So I put those two stamped parts on from Nikki's envelope. I'm sure that in the future uh, videos like this, I won't remember who made each thing. I know that that's going to fade from my mind, but I just opened all the envelopes right before I made this page, so I remembered what things were from. That little piece of washi tape was also off of Nikki Parr's envelope. Um, this airmail sticker, I can't remember whose it was on, but it was one of the international envelopes. They put this little airmail sticker on there, and it it was blue, I thought it matched, so I added it to the page. Then this piece was on the outside of Bea Grobe's envelope. It was like a little stamped image with some color. Um, and I really wanted to use it, but it in, did not end up making it on the page because it just it was too big and I couldn't get it to fit on there the way that I wanted. So I ended up putting most of the stuff away. I gotta save it for the other pages that I'm going to be doing. I should be able to get uh, nine pages done out of this stuff unless, like in this case, I used two different people's page on one page. So maybe I'm not going to get all nine, but I am going to try to finish this journal using all the stuff I got in the crazy pages. So I'm still trying to figure out if I can put this, this girl on here, this, um, hand carved stamped image from Bea. I just, I want it on there, but it just, it's just not fitting. <laughs> so I put it back away and I end up getting out the little sticker that was a customs form stuck on one of the envelopes. I can't remember whose, but I decide that since there's the butterfly stamped image and then there's also some butterflies flying around on Linda's crazy page from a stamp, I think, I decide to make a butterfly and put it on there. And so I fold the custom sticker in half and cut out a butterfly shape. Um, not the best butterfly you've ever seen. It's pretty whimsical and primitive, but hey, you can at least tell what it is. Um, unfortunately, it kind of makes the page unbalanced, but I just thought I needed one more thing on there and, you know, something to focus on. Um, so I end up sticking that on there and then um, once that's dry I'm going to draw some some lines on it and color with with some Posca acrylic pens but before that I had this little piece of embroidery floss sitting on my desk next to my mat that was from you know I, if you guys have been following along, I sometimes use this big bin of scraps 
that I have uh, from things that are left over from projects. This is kind of the same type of an idea. I'm using all different uh, disparate pieces from different people to, to try to make something cohesive. But the other day I was making a triptych tag and I got out all the different fibers that were laying in the bottom of that that leftover scraps bin and this was one of them and it's still just laying on the desk and so I decided to use it up on this page because it was blue and it kind of matched so my original idea was to use it on the little antenna which I did but then I still had some left so I made a spiral shape out of some of it and a, a line at the top also what what kind of prompted me to do this is because there's a little bit of stitching on Linda's page a little bit of zigzag and straight stitching there next to the butterfly. So now I've got out my Posca pins and I end up using a black and white and then this set that's called their naturals set, which is um, one that not that many people that I've seen have, but uh, I got it from Amazon and it's kind of their pastels and it actually ended up having some colors that really went with this page, a kind of pinkish purple and a, a turquoisey color, and then a little bit of a yellow, which um, Lind Linda's page has a little bit of yellow on it. So those are the colors I end up using on my butterfly to color it in. Here's the set. Posca is made by Uni, which, um, is I believe an Asian company and that's the reason that it has Asian writing on it. <laughs> I can't read it. I don't know what it says, but I but they also make the Uniball, which is a lot of people's favorite um, black pen as well. But I really like these pens because they're in acrylic and they're opaque. So as I'm coloring over this sticker that has a lot of, you know, it has a barcode and a lot of lines on it. The places that I color in with the Posca pen are completely covered by the color as opposed to using, you know, like my, using a watercolor or water-based pen or my India ink-based Faber-Castell pens. Those would have allowed the patterning on the sticker to show through and these don't. So it gives me, that's the reason I picked them for this particular thing. It gives me kind of a a more varied looking image by having some of it printed and some of it covered by color. So I thought it was fun. It's kind of whimsical, kind of fun, and um, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. Um, leave me a comment if you thought this page was fun. And of course, subscribe if you haven't already. We're getting so, so close to 10,000 in that 10 mini canvas giveaway. So you don't want to miss that. Of course, to win, you have to be a subscriber. <laughs> so if you've been watching my channel and you have not yet subscribed, and I know there are a lot of you out there because I can see it from my, from my numbers, um, do that subscribey thing. Click the button. So my final thing to do on this, now not a, my second to my final thing to do is to put some splatters on there. And I use, just use my white Posca pen paint that was on the little um, deli paper that I had to splatter with a just a, a small paintbrush. And then I used a Tim Holtz sticker. I just thought there needed to be something right in the middle there. It says fly. And I think that's it for this page. Oh, that's right. I went around the edges with black, um, grunged up the edges and made, made them dark using a Memento Tuxedo Black ink pad, which is a permanent pad. So that's it for crazy page number one. Bye-bye.